I am now happy to return the presentation over to Angela. Angela, take it away. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Angie Bates, and this webinar is on finding and serving hidden patrons. Um, if any of you went to our soul this past fall, um, I gave the presentation there as well, so um, hopefully you will enjoy it. I am um, the assistant librarian at Perry Memorial Library. Having trouble advancing my slide. Let's see. Um, I don't have the control box to advance the slide, so get to see the first slide. <laughs> um, I am the assistant director at Perry Memorial Library, which is in Henderson, North Carolina. Henderson is in Vance County, thank you, um, which is in the far north part of the state, close to uh, the Virginia state line, if any of you are familiar. Uh, the, um, let me think of where I might describe it. Uh, actually, 15 minutes from Virginia, the South Hill area, if anybody knows where that is. We are the only library branch in our county, which serves about 44,000 people. Um, we're located in almost the center of the county. The majority of the county is rural, except for um, three small cities. Henderson, which is um, probably the size of maybe Terre Haute, I would guess would be a good, in Indiana, good size. I'm originally from Indiana, so that's how I kind of know that. Um, we serve patrons um, that are uh, for the most part, uh, lower educated, um, basically high school education is the majority of our patrons. We do have some that um, have gone to college, but most once they go to college leave Vance County, there are not very many opportunities here except for uh, blue collar workers. A lot of farming, um, a few warehouses, there's a Revlon plant here and a John Deere plant, that sort of thing. Um, so the way this all got started Someone could advance me. Um, let's see. Kira, do you know how I can get back to the screen where I can advance myself? I have a full screen adaption of my presentation. If you can help me with that, that'd be great. Um, how this whole thing started is we were beginning to work on our strategic plan in 2014. Thank you. The red state there, is, the red county is us. And um, could advance again. The other dots there, there's Raleigh, Charlotte, and Asheville, if you're familiar with our state. There is our library right there at the, the lower center. All of the area that has the slash marks through it, that is all rural area. Um, the part that's not marked at all is completely undeveloped. Um, it's mostly not developable. It's uh, sloped. It's um, bare. No, no people in that area. Next slide. Um, we started our um, strategic plan in 2014, and we decided we would kind of like to include community outreach because we really hadn't been doing much of that. And it seemed like there was definitely a need, but we weren't really sure who to target. And once we did figure out who to target, we weren't really sure what anyone would need. And then the big question was with the staff that we have, how would we even begin an outreach program? There's um, here at the library, we have a full-time staff of five and a part-time staff of nine. Um, so we weren't really sure how we would manage an outreach program. Um, so we looked at the demographics of our area. Next slide. Um, we decided that even though this was a great idea, figuring out how to do it would be the most important way to figure that out, which is the Neil Gaiman um, quotation. I, he's one of my favorite authors, so that's how I found him. Next. Um, we looked at the demographics of our area. And like I said, we do have 44,000 um, approximately, a little over that, patrons in our area. Of course, all do not have a library card. We have about three quarters of the county with library cards. Could you go to the next slide, please? Um, hey, Angie, yes, if you go to the top right hand side of your screen, there are, it's like a little square of arrows. If you click on that, you should um, go to a smaller screen where you can see the advanced arrows. 
I do not have that. The only thing I have is a help at the top. Um, okay, well, I, I am happy to everything. <laughs> if you just want to say next slide, I'll do that. Next slide, please. <laughs> Thank you. So through research, um, we found that 27% of our population that we serve in this county is under the age of 18, and 12% of that is under the age of 5 and 38% of our population was over 60. Um, so we took that into consideration as well as looking at our mission statement, which um, was to serve lifelong learning, which would take care of that over 60 population, leisure activity for all of them, and early literacy. So um, we decided that our primary outreach focus should probably be preschool children and seniors, with a secondary focus on the 18 and to five, uh, or even up to 20 range, because that was the, the young adult in early edu uh, elementary ages. Next slide, please. Okay. <laughs> With the preschool outreach, um, we decided that we needed to find some partners to let us know how many preschools were in um, Vance County and to see how we could talk with them to see how we could serve them best. Next. We decided to check with Smart Start. I'm not sure if you have Smart Start in the states that you're involved in, but here in Smart Start, here in North Carolina, Smart Start is in charge of all of the early education um, venues. Any place that has a home daycare, a certified daycare that would be a separate facility or a preschool facility all needs to register with Smart Start. Um, and Smart Start gives them um, their directives on the things that they need to include in their curriculum and they give them a star rating uh, one through five as to how they're doing in the in the ratings we already had an established relationship with them we helped them with their uh, dolly parton imagination library we also did some um, funding drives with them also our director was on their board um, of directors so uh, we thought they would help us with this. They had the information that we would need about how many daycares there were and what kind of daycares would, what the daycares might need. Next slide, please. They have uh, 12 priorities, and they picked three of them that would fall under things we could help them with. One was access to better classroom or center libraries, um, field trips either into the community or for community to go and visit them, so that the students would get a better idea of some of the things that were out there in the community. And also, um, they wanted to see more centers in their schools, more center education that would allow kids to be able to go from very basic to a little bit more advanced, all um, learning about the same topics. And so they sent those to us, and we developed some programs that we thought would fall into these categories. Um, next slide. Um, the first priority we came up with, next, is book baskets, um, which is not a, a, a new idea. Lots of libraries use them. But what we decided is we would have um, book baskets available. Teachers could call us, let us know what they needed in them, what grade levels, and we would put them together so that would um, advance their libraries. Uh, next, that we thought we could maybe take our monthly story times to the daycare centers that could not come into us. We had originally, when I first started here in um, 2012, I was the Youth Services Librarian, and we had a number of, of daycare centers coming to us, but as their budgets were cut, um, we had very few coming back into the library, so we thought we, we could do this for them. And the third priority um, was Books and Beyond Bags. Um, and my previous career before becoming a librarian was as an elementary and preschool teachers. So I thought we could put together some kit bags based around a theme with books in them and a lot of extra activities that could help them with their centers. Next. Um, book baskets, we started right away. Like I said, there's a month checkout period for them. They can have up to 30 books. They could choose five different topics. They could tell us whether they wanted um, picture books or easy readers, or maybe they wanted nonfiction. We weren't charging any late fees. They could renew if they wanted to, and basically they would just let us know during the month what they wanted for the next month. We would refill another basket and then trade out with them at the end. But the teachers had to come in and pick them up. We didn't have any way to deliver them. The Books and Beyond bag, um, we needed money in order to have a specialized collection of books as well as materials. And our friends at the library was able to give us a grant, 
and Kappa Delta Pi, which is an education um, service sorority, also met here at the library. Um, and one of the Board of Trustees members suggested that I come and present the idea to them. And between the two groups, we were able to get a $5,000 grant from them to assemble these bags. And the Kappa Delta Pi members, most of which were um, retired teachers and media specialists, were excited to come help us put them together. Um, I had teen volunteers at the time, and my young daughter was also, you know, free help. So I used her quite a bit. Um, the Books and Beyond bags are have one theme per bag, like... Um, snow or dogs or cats, that sort of thing. We would put six to ten books in them, some nonfiction, some picture books, and then we have uh, put in three to five different center folders that would have lots of activities about snow or dogs or cats, um, puzzles and games, those sorts of things. Most of the things that we um, picked came from teachers, pay teachers, because they were mostly free and very inexpensive. We also put that information in the bag where everything came from, so if the teachers wanted to duplicate something, they would know where they could go. Next, please. Um, and there's, there's a picture of the snow bag. Um, the list of materials was a little bit daunting for our checkout people to keep looking to see if everything was in there that needed to be in there. So we asked the teachers, we put a checklist in to see which things did you use, um, and then we could check those specific things when they were checked in, because some of the bags had a lot of things in them. Next. Um, we had a huge turnover in 2018. We had, um, by, we had at that time, we had um, 10 full-time people, five of them retired, uh, three part-time people found full-time jobs, and we were happy with, for them. But we realized that we needed to restructure how we were doing things. And at that time, the director decided we could actually plan for outreach positions so people didn't have to come in the library to get the book baskets or the books and beyond bags. And we might now be able to go out and serve people where they were. So we planned two outreach positions and made them full-time positions. Uh, they were half-time circulation and half-time adult outreach. And we had a half-time person in the library for youth services. And her other half of her time was going to be used for youth outreach. Um, and so that's how we restructured our programming. And we were able to now start story time visits. Um, each month, we would go to the different daycare centers the same time um, each week, or each, excuse me, each month, so they would know when we were coming. Um, the library would choose a theme appropriate to the time of year. And it would be between 30 and 45 minutes, depending upon what age group we were serving. Um, two to three stories, songs, movement, all the kinds of things we would do in the library, we were just going to take it on the road. Yeah. Um, when we went back to Smart Start with this idea, they told us that there were 49 daycare centers in Vance County. The yellow dot is where the library is, and all those red dots are all the different um, schools. And we thought, wow, this is kind of daunting. So what do we do? How do you, you know, eat a bear? <laughs> One bite at a time. So that's what we did. Next, please. Um, we, oh, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> Next. <laughs> we developed program folders. Um, and in the folders, we put what the program would be about. Um, we divided our time into a three-hour time window travel each day. And we just started cold calling all of the daycare centers. Um, we would take them, myself and the uh, youth services outreach person, we'd go to each of the daycare centers, give them our spiel about what we were planning to do, leave the information, um, hopefully get a, an appointment right with right away with them and have them fill out a card, a library card application for their institution. Next, please. Um, out of the 49, we had 34 centers that said they wanted us to come and do story time for them. We had 28 centers that said they would like to have book baskets. And we had 23 centers that said they'd like to have book and beyond bags, but not um, until school had started back up. Some of these had overlaps and some were on their own, and we were thrilled. Um, so we started actually going and visiting the daycare centers in May. Um, most of the books and beyond bags weren't started delivering until August. Next, please. Um, we, the program set up so that we would drop off the book baskets to the centers when we went for story time. That would give us a month um, for them to look at them before we would come back. Um, we also chatted with all the pre-Ks um, teachers once they came back in in August. We've seen them at the end of the year in May, but we went back to see them in August. And um, 
they were very excited to see us again. Oh yeah, we forgot all about that. Tell us again how it works. Next, please. The second phase was our senior shut-in outreach, and we were hoping to have as much success with this one as we did with our other one. Um, but first we had to figure out who to talk to to find out how many shut-in centers there were. And then once we found out where they were, what would they even want from us? Probably not a story time, but maybe something like that. And then how would we reach them? How would we find out where they are? Um, we talked to three of the centers that do a lot with um, delivering to home delivery. Um, the Vance County Senior Center delivers just into the, the community closest to where the Senior Center was with about a 20, not quite 20 mile radius around. And they developed, they um, did the Meals on Wheels program right in the Henderson area. The Axe House was a church sponsored group. Um, three different uh, ministries sponsored it. And they actually worked in the county. And they all delivered meals, um, approximately between the two of them, approximately 75 meals a day. And so we thought these people could help us get our message out to all the shut ins. Next. So, step one, we developed a, a survey. Um, to give out to the patrons that said, you know, have you been to the library in a while? Do you have a library card? Would you even like to have this service? And we asked the um, delivery staff to deliver it along with their meals. And we had um, given them an overview of the program in case the people had any questions. Then the next step was to wait a week and go back and pick up the surveys. And uh, we had left a, um, a calling card, both mine and the um, uh, adult services um, person who'd be doing the delivering with our pictures on them so they would kind of be familiar of who the people were. Okay. Then after we um, picked up the surveys and left our card, we went through the surveys to see how many people would really want the service and what kinds of things they thought they might want. And then finally we started calling the people who had said yes, they would be interested in the program. So we were very hopeful. 75 went out, we wanted to see how many would come back but it didn't turn out quite as well as it did with the Youth Services Program. Uh, next slide, please. Three people out of the 75 number survey said, yes, come to my house, <laughs> which was not what we were expecting. We thought there would be a lot of shut-ins that would want us to come. And so we started working with those three people, and suddenly we had an epiphany. Well, actually, I didn't. But the person that was doing our outreach service, she said, hey, what about all those facilities that people are in? Um, could we do something at a, yes, go ahead, that's fine. Could we do something at an assisted living center or a um, nursing home or that sort of thing? So we started um, going to those places and asking if, you know, they would like something similar to a story time. Just come in and share a bunch of, of uh, adult books on a topic that we could leave that people could look at. Maybe start book clubs or book baskets. And But then we thought, you know, that's kind of big. We're, we need to just start talking to people and see. Then we remember down in the basement, we had these things called bifocal kits. And um, a grant that we got back in 1995 um, were, were for multisensory um, kits that would spur remembering and discussion. It was used originally for um, Alzheimer's type centers, but the more we looked at it, it could be used for anything. And they actually had a writing program that went along with it that people could write memoirs if they wanted to. So we thought this would be the perfect place to start. We didn't have to develop a program. We had a program in hand that we could take to the different facilities and say, hey, we have this program. We would love to come and do this program for your people or let you do it for them, whichever you would prefer. And so we did that, just that. We did our cold calling and we presented it. The um, Senior Center Resources Services and the um, Chamber of Commerce gave us a number of date of um, day centers for seniors, uh, assisted living centers, uh, nursing homes, and memory care units um, that covered Henderson and the county. And we started our cold call process again. Um, four facilities said that they wanted to use our bifocal kits, which was pretty happy for us. We thought, yay, we've got this going on. And so we started delivering monthly to those four facilities. And then our outreach person had another epiphany. Next, please. Aren't there a bunch of shut-ins inside those facilities? <laughs> facilities have shut-ins. Why can't we maybe take our books to those people? 
which I don't know why we didn't think of to begin with, because it seems like such an easy concept, but we hadn't. And so we did. We began taking um, our surveys, next slide, um, to the shut-ins in the, in the home, the nursing homes, the assisted facilities, those places, and um, started the same process. We gave the, um, a, a presentation at each one of the centers that would allow us and said, you know, this is a possibility. We could bring books to you. And we went to the senior center. We talked to those people, said, hey, if you would like to have services, because I know a lot of you can't come without help to the senior center, maybe you would like to have the services. And so after um, looking at the program from that direction, we got more success. Next. We, um, oh, I'm sorry, one more. <laughs> that was all the things we did. We started the, proce the procedure all over. And in those four facilities, we got 13 people that wanted it and eight more people in private residences from um, the, the talk at the Senior Center. We also were able to sign up 13 people for the North Carolina Blind and Assisted, um, Blind and Reading Disabled Assisted Reading Program, where they would send audiobooks um, with special materials to um, people's homes because our audiobooks weren't exactly helping. So we were able to sign up a lot of people for that program, which really excited us as well. Next. So phase three was student access, which is something that North Carolina has available through our NC Cardinal um, consortium. I know in Indiana, everyone in all of the state is part of the consortium. Here in North Carolina, about, um, I think it's 43 of the 100 counties and um, a few other multiple county um, regional libraries are part of the program. And they have something, a program that allows students to use their government numbers that they use for free and reduced lunch or just regular lunch, their number that they're assigned to um, be a library card and check out books that way. Um, next slide. And so we looked into being part of that program. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, we looked into being part of that program. They handled all of the technology for us. All we had to do was talk to the school district um, send letters out to parents and saying, hey, you know, this is something that we're going to be doing. You are, can opt out if you'd like to, but otherwise all of your children's num card numbers will be part of the library system. Next. Um, they can place holds on anything that's in our library, but they can't get um, books from other libraries through this program. Um, they can get up to 10 things. There's no fines unless they damage the book or lose it. Um, and they can get access to all of the databases through NC Live, which for the high school students is a wonderful thing. The elementary students have something called NC Wise Owl, which lets them get to some databases that are there at their level, but ones that the high school students would need to get, they have to have a library card to have ex access to it. So they were able to have access to that through their card as well. Next. Um, we thought all of that would be great to give them access, but it doesn't really help the people that can't get to the library anyway, especially the ones in the outer parts of the county, which um, of the 13 elementary schools, the junior high and the high school that are in Vance County, the high school and junior high school are um, about 15 to 25 miles from the library and only three of the elementary schools are within walking distance. Three of them are even farther away than the junior high and middle school. So, um, once this, the regular program started in um, October, we also looked into a, a secondary program here through our library, um, next slide, which let, allowed the three farthest elementary schools to get books delivered to them. And our friends of the library, the um, Chamber of Commerce, and one of the, uh, who, who got us in touch with someone at one of the, um, mills here in town that buys fleets of vehicles. They worked with us to negotiate with one of our local Chevrolet dealerships and got us a car that we were so excited about um, that we could start delivering books and materials out to the schools um, because it ended up being a lot <laughs> when we were trying to do it in, in people's cars. Um, we had it fitted with some permanent um, attachments to put milk crates in so they wouldn't move and slide all over the place. Um, and so um, every Thursday we have deliveries to um, three of the outer elementary schools 
and the middle school and the high school. And the parents and teachers can also, um, the teachers have identification numbers already. The parents can use students' identification numbers um, and have the materials delivered to the schools so that the students can um, check out the books. And then they return them to their, pub, their um, library there in the media center, and we pick them up the next week when we're there and deliver new ones. So it's been an, an absolutely fantastic way to not only get to the elementary schools, but now we can use this to um, go to all of the story times and uh, deliver things to the uh, centers as well. We got the car in October. It was so exciting. It now has a, has a sticker on it, which I forgot to take a picture of, but we have a big sticker on the side of the car that says Prairie Memorial Library on Wheels. We bring books to you. So we were pretty excited about that. Um, it's just a small SUV. We're looking at possibly getting a, a larger bookmobile, but that's a few years down the road when we can find some funding. But that's the meat of our program. Um, the biggest part was finding partners. Um, the, the partners that we were able to find to begin with were just ones that we had associations with already. And then those partners helped us find other partners, and those partners helped us find other partners. So um, I can't stress enough how you need to look for partnerships within the community that can actually give you assistance in your programming. If you can match your programming up with their um, programs already, you can really go a lot farther than you can on your own. Um, we do not have a very large budget. We are a 5013C. Um, we do receive funding from the state library um, and some funding from the county and the city, but most of ours is through um, fundraising and um, partnerships. So that has really helped us a great deal. Um, if anyone is interested, I can give you a link to all of the materials that we've used, how we um, <laughs> use Google Maps, Maps exclusively to plan out our, <laughs> our traveling programs to figure out the maps. There's also a, a free app out there that will help you plot maps to show you directions, who's closest, who's farthest. I can um, link you to that as well if you appreci would appreciate that. Um, any of the surveys that we used, we'd be happy to share, as well as any of the materials that we used. Um, the Book and Beyond bags have turned out to be even a greater success than we thought. Um, we had started out with 23 centers using them. Um, when I talked with our outreach person, she said at the first of this year, um, we have gone to um, 37 of the, school, of the different schools that are using them. Um, the bad part is, is we only have 30 bags, so um, some of them don't get trans uh, get their bag as quickly as they might want, and sometimes we've been able to work deals with different daycare centers, like if you get done with this early, we'll come pick it up in the meantime and take it to the next one. Um, but those were a lot of fun to make, um, and I have a resource list for those if you are interested in that. But that is my program, so I would love to hear from you. Do you have questions or input or even ideas how we can make our program better? Uh, hi, this is Linda. She asked, was it, was it difficult to set up your ILS to accept student IDs as their access to library materials? I don't know because luckily Cardinal did all of that for us. Um, we didn't have to do anything. Uh, we, we got them the list, and they were able to put it in, and it was up and running, and we didn't even know anything about it. So if you're in Indiana, you might be able to talk to your cardinal people, or they might be able to talk to our cardinal people. Um, Georgia, I think, also Georgia Pines area has Evergreen as well, so they might be able to you know, spread the information how they did that around, but I honestly don't know how they did it. We would not have been able to do it on our own. Um, Andy, I I'm see someone sure ask when about you Indiana has, when you say Indiana um, you has have, the cardinal. Um, you guys have evergreen, which um, we call it cardinal, but you all call it evergreen. Oh, okay. I believe. Gotcha. Yes. I'm sorry, I, I right. misspoke about that. Yes, it's the evergreen system. Um, in in yes. in North Carolina, we just call it cardinal. I think they call it pines in Georgia. Do they call it something different in Indiana, or do they just call it evergreen? We just call it evergreen. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, there's some kind of module that allows it to happen. So, um, um, someone else share. is asking. 
can you share with the program that you use oh, yes. for collect of memoirs? The bifocal program, which is, it's actually bifocal.net um, or .com, I can't remember, is out there that you can um, purchase materials from. The, the kits that come with it have um, CDs with music, they have um, pictures and photographs, they have um, stories and skits that you can share among to get the, pe uh, the people in your audience involved. They can be partners in this um, uh, little skits that are there. Um, also, they have uh, excerpts of stories that you can read and share to get discussion going about, you know, I remember when, you know, I got my first dog when I was five and what it looked like and I've had dogs ever since, that sort of thing. There's another component to the program that's called uh, My Memoirs and they have, um, for lack of a, of a better way to describe it, what um, elementary school teachers would use as kind of like a, an outline. It gives questions and ideas to get them thinking about things that they could write down. Um, and they could just start recording their memoirs through that program. Um, and then we used a um, service online that uh, allows you to get your books bound. It's called um, my, mybookbinding.org. And you send them your books, and they put your your papers in um, typed form with whatever it is you want on them, so that it's in a PDF type format. You can send it to them. You can also send loose pages to them, and they can bind them for you, which is pretty neat. It 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 is a little expensive. It's is about five to seven dollars um, a book, but usually the people once they have put so much time and effort into it, they want to get it bound for their families. Um, also, we, we have a um, comb machine where you can put plastic combs around things. We've done that for a lot of people who didn't want to pay the cost to have it actually bound. But it, it, it's a fantastic program. Um, it, it's very simple. It, the people that come to the, the, the um, bifocal program, once we're talking and getting information and ideas uh, swirling, it's amazing how people will talk among themselves and different people's ideas will spark different things. And usually at the end of the program, we'll say, you know, we're going to stay for another hour when this is over to do some writing. If any of you would like to stay and, you know, try to, to write some memoirs that you might be able to share with your children or your grandchildren. And that's kind of how that program was born. Okay, I have another question from Emily. We are struggling to figure out how to reach patrons that speak other languages. Is this something your library system is looking at serving non-English speaking patrons as well? Actually, it is. Um, we've been trying to figure out how we can make it happen. One of our adult services library assistants that we just recently hired part-time is a Spanish speaker, native Spanish speaker. and. We've been talking with her to figure out there is a Spanish center here in town that's not just um, a senior center, it's, it's a family center, about possibly taking a story time program as well as a bifocal program there um, and working it in a schedule so that she might be able to go with us um, and get other kinds of desk coverage. We haven't started it yet, but it's something we're very interested in. Okay, Emily said that's great. Does anyone else have any questions for okay, Andy? If you do, you can just type in the chat box. I'll go ahead and put up the screen with the LEU certificate as well. And Andy